Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Mercedes were surprisingly slow at Silverstone compared to how they normally perform at that circuit, but can they get another double podium at Hungary as they achieved there last year? James Allison seems to believe they can, as the new front wing, despite not seemingly doing much at Silverstone, apparently has performed to their expectations, and around the Hungaro ring, they expect a much more significant effect. Very much enjoyed to hear your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Here's Dana Ricciardo returning to Alpha Tauri. He was there when it was Toro Rosso, of course, several years ago. Welcome back, Honey Badge. It's all rather nice. And all this for him to get, what, P19 in the race come Hungary. Hopefully it doesn't happen, right? But the car isn't very good. So I'm hopeful that he's going to have a good race, but it's um, far from guaranteed. Domenico Carli, he's at it again. This 11th Formula 1 team, the Andretti Cadillac General Motors entry. There's been quite a lot of talk about this today. I saw a video on the race where they said that, to their understanding, this is not particularly likely now. It doesn't feel like all the stakeholders are aligned to make this happen but um, they're meant to give an answer basically now as to whether there will be a new entry and to whether any of the entrants have at least from the FIA's perspective passed the tests and then it comes down to whether the teams and other stakeholders want it I think it's a bit unlikely at the moment. There is also some talk on the sprint races saying that they will stay with six in order to respect old fans, to, you know, respect the habit of long-standing enthusiasts. So they're going to stick with six sprint weekends for next season and beyond. So hopefully it doesn't go beyond that, but I'm sure he's going to try, but apparently not for next year. He's also had another bright idea as for some sort of additional Grand Slam. So if you guys know the Grand Chelem, also known as the Grand Slam, is when a driver gets pole position, wins the race, sets the fastest lap of the race and leads every lap of the Grand Prix. Doesn't happen very often. I think Jim Clark has the most ever. Verstappen already has got one or two this season but even Hamilton doesn't have that many of them. There were probably many races where Hamilton could have got more but when it was a Mercedes 1-2 and Hamilton would, you know, have pole, win the race, get the fastest lap but often they would pit him first because the leading car gets the preferential pit strategy. Bottas would leave one lap and then Hamilton and comes back out again, leads the rest of the Grand Prix. It doesn't happen very often and is a rare occasion when a driver does get a Grand Chelem. But apparently, Domenico Carli wants another, an actual award, because it's not like an award that's really given out. It's just kind of a nice to have on a weekend. But Domenico Carli reckons that for a sprint weekend, if you get both poles and both race wins, that should also be some sort of Grand Slam where we give them an extra award. I don't really know why. And if it is going to be considered a Grand Slam, this seems easier to achieve. But both poles, both wins. That's more achievable, for sure, than a normal Grand Chelem is. So whether it has to be like a super slam where you get both poles, fastest lap in both races, lead every lap of both races, that would be interesting to give that an actual award. It might be doable, especially in the hands of Red Bull and Max Verstappen. So you know, maybe it's going to happen at some point later this year. There's also been some intentions for some of the teams to change around the new format, right? So I prefer the newer version of this format where Friday, qualifies for Sunday and then Saturday is a standalone sprint day. I think that's better than what we previously had when the sprint set the grid for Sunday because they just promoted such conservative driving that it was pretty boring I thought the sprint races but the teams want them to change this such that the sprint qualifying is done on Friday. The sprint would then be Saturday morning where normal qualifying would be and then or at least for qualifying for the sprint race and then Saturday afternoon they would then do qualifying for the race on Sunday. So you still kind of get the sprint quali Friday, then the sprint Saturday morning, then quali Saturday afternoon like normal, then into the race on Sunday. I kind of like the way that would be done. It does raise some questions as to, well, if you crash in the sprint, then you probably can't qualify for the main race unless there's plenty of hours in between to get your car fixed up. So maybe the teams wouldn't like that so much. Bit of a risk there because, again, the issue with the sprint was the original format was that if you crashed or had an incident, your race starting position was completely squandered so nobody tried to do anything really and it might be the same story here knowing that if you crash you might not be able to qualify because you can't get your car fixed in time and therefore you start at the back on Sunday anyway so I don't know if I like it but I think these are some solid suggestions that have been raised. Also this has been noted after all the talks about Lando having discussions with Ferrari and with Red Bull and apparently with every team about joining them over the next few years. He was noted to have followed Red Bull Racing's official Instagram accounts not 
not that long ago, he only follows McLaren, Red Bull and Alfa Tauri, which is a little bit interesting, it's got to be said. So I guess we'll stay tuned on that one. But speaking of McLaren, they have brought a lot of upgrades lately and they have been yielding great results. Let's not forget, right, Oscar Piastri didn't even have the new front wing that I believe McLaren brought in Silverstone. Norris did. And they've got even more upgrades, I believe, arriving in Hungary. That's really exciting for the state of the sport as it stands. And even after Hungary, they say they've got more things in the pipeline. They sacrificed the early race of this season. They knew their package was terrible at the start of the year, but they put all their eggs in the basket of this working. And it's done exactly that. It's good and bad for Mercedes. In one sense, it's inspiring for Mercedes because they know that such a jump in performance is possible. McLaren have found basically a second of lap time in the last few races. Their car looks more like a Red Bull now than it did previously. And given all the before and after images that Mercedes and other teams will have, they will be looking very closely at exactly what McLaren have changed to develop in the way that they have managed to do. But from Mercedes' perspective, they're like, hang on a second here. We were catching up to Red Bull. We were the second fastest team in Spain, hands down. And all of a sudden, McLaren have now been ahead of them two races in a row. So what's going on there? And will they perform better going forward? Because Silverstone has typically been a great circuit for Mercedes. But it seems like with their latest upgrades, it doesn't really favour them as much as it did previously. As James Allison describes here in this video that I'll share for you guys, he says, look, Silverstone is not known for its slower speed corners. And the big upgrade they brought, supposedly the big upgrade that Total Wolf called a huge upgrade of this new front wing that didn't really do much, let's be honest. But it was seemingly helping them in some of the slower speeds. The final corners of the lap at Vale and Club Corner, it was helping them there. And also it was helping them in, was it Farm and the Loop, right? Those early corners and maybe a little bit in terms of um, Brooklands and Luffield, but I'm pretty sure they were losing mega time in Maggots, Beckett's Chapel and then Stowe. That's where a lot of the Mercedes lap time was disappearing relative to the Red Bulls, relative to the McLarens. But a circuit like Hungary, very different characteristics. Did our new front wing perform as expected or is there more to come from it? Bit early to tell. The new front wing, of course, is designed to make us go faster. That's why we do all our things but the specific characteristics of this new front wing that we're excited about is it should improve the balance and performance of the car through the slower range of the corners. Now, Silverstone is famous for lots of things, but lots and lots of slow corners is not one of them. So what we took as a comfort from Silverstone is that in the slower parts of the track, we were looking pretty decently competitive. So that's a tick in the box for this new front wing. But I guess it will only be when we get to Hungary which is a track made up almost entirely of slower stuff that we'll get to know for sure. But early signs are promising. New front wing seemed to do what we expected and hopefully it will bring us more at tracks which have a, a wider range of slow corners. So Hungary is a significantly higher downfall circuit, predominantly made up of slower speed corners, such as even a Singapore that we'll go to in not too many races time. So that was the thing for Mercedes. In Spain, they were competitive with Red Bull in the higher speeds, but they lacked heavily in the slower speeds. So they've tried to affect that. They've tried to benefit their car by producing this new front wing that has apparently, and even Giuliano de Kessa says, the direction is now clearer. It doesn't feel like Mercedes made progress in Silverstone but James Allison says yeah it's doing what we thought it would we understand the concept now a little bit better and Giuliano de Kessa says yeah the front wing delivers a more stable flow to the rear however it can't ever be satisfied when it's not the fastest Mercedes powered team if there's no Aston now there's McLaren so there's always going to be some frustration there from Mercedes about the way it's going but they do believe that this front wing is a step and in Hungary given it's all relatively slower speed corners and a circuit that Mercedes have typically done pretty well at and Hamilton's an absolute monster around there. And last year, they got a double podium. Verstappen won the race. Hamilton was about seven seconds behind. He put on the soft at the end and made some big overtakes. Russell was P3. Ferrari bottled the strategy, if you guys remember right, when Russell stuck it on pole. Verstappen was starting P10 after an issue. The two Ferraris were up there and they gave Leclerc the classic three-stop strategy, right? They did like the mediums, soft, hard, whatever they were playing at that race. Absolute shambles from Ferrari as usual. 
and they managed to squander any podium despite looking like it was nailed on. So Mercedes capitalized last year, but this year they will have more teams to beat because obviously McLaren are looking good as well. Still does seem to me though there's some mixed messages coming out of Mercedes because James Allison saying, yeah, the front wing works. We think we'll be better in Hungary than we were in Silverstone as a result of that change. Toto Wolff says though, completely different circuit, the Hungaro ring. Let's see how we perform there. Overall, I don't think it will be as good as here. Of course, talking about Silverstone. So Toto Wolff's like, nah, I don't reckon Hungary will be as good. Whereas his, you know, top guy, James Allison saying, yeah, it should be better. So I don't really know if Mercedes fully know what to expect weekend on weekends. All they can predict is that they're going to be good at Barcelona every year, it seems. But apart from that, then it's a bit of a question mark at the moment. Then in Spa, they do have one more upgrade they're bringing, at least before the summer break. I don't exactly know what that's going to include. Potentially a new rear wing, maybe. I think that was the rumor that was going around. And we'll see some things, I'm sure, from then to the end of the season. But their focus will have predominantly switched by this point to next year's design. I will say I did think this quote was kind of funny. He was asked the question, is he irritated by being beaten by a customer team, such as a McLaren, such as an Aston Martin? But he says no. And I feel like this is almost copium, is it not? He says, no, I'm not irritated at all. I'm actually very happy about this because it just shows that the Mercedes engines are performing very well. It's quite the way to spin it, right? I mean, maybe it's true in some respects, but it's kind of a funny way to spin it from Toto Wolff that he's like, oh yeah, really happy that we're getting smoked by Aston Martin and, and uh, <laughs> now McLaren and even sometimes Williams in qualifying because it just shows that Mercedes engine's doing really well. It's like, look, maybe change your car and um, fortunes would be a little bit different. I do wonder what you guys think has been going on with Aston Martin lately though because the discussion here from De Kessa again is that the new floor, which is for some reason always translated to funds in um, from Italian, but um, the new floor has changed the balance of the AMR 23, which was a very consistent car until Barcelona. Now the performances are fluctuating. So I think we expected, I mean, at the start of the season, the only challenger to Verstappen ever was probably going to be Alonso if the Aston Martin maintained its level. It hasn't done. It's had a couple of tricky races lately where it hasn't really had the pace. And Barcelona, it wasn't there even since then. Okay, Canada was good. But ever since um, yeah, Alonso said, this is the last race without a podium, hasn't really gone so well. So we'll see what happens with Aston Martin, but they've taken a bit of a step back, it seems, as McLaren have taken a step forward. And also we've got to remember Red Bull are bringing upgrades in Hungary as well. So unless their upgrades do what Aston Martin's upgrades have apparently done here and do what Ferrari's upgrades did last year, which is basically send them sideways or backwards, then we're probably not going to have much of a race in our hands regardless in a few days time. Just a quick final thing to mention, you guys might have seen this flying around, that Singapore business magnate Ong Beng Seng, who is heavily involved and straight up behind the Singapore Grand Prix, has been arrested for some sort of corruption related activities. I don't know if he's guilty. We don't know at this point. He's paid the bail or whatever. I don't know if this will be realistically affecting anything with regard to the Singapore Grand Prix, but there's been some talk about that it might potentially. So I guess we'll have to stay tuned for that one. No charge has been filed against him, but um, he's going to have to have a visit to the authorities, let's say. But if he's got enough money, he can probably get away with it. You guys know how these things work. So very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.